This is Amar Bharati. Till the 1970s, his life wasn't any different from the rest. He worked in a bank, had a wife and three kids, but then he had an epiphany, and Bharati decided to dedicate his life to the god Shiva. To prove his faith and gratitude, he decided to raise his arm and not lower it for the rest of his life. You can see what came out of it. Bharati kept his promise, and if you think that was easy, try to hold your arm like this for some time. Most likely, you'll feel discomfort in a matter of minutes. Now keep in mind, this man has been doing this for 49 years. During his first years, he was traveling and felt incredibly severe pain, but it wasn't as strong as his perseverance and dedication. After some time, Bharati began to lose any sort of sense in his arm, the pain disappeared along with it. Apparently, he can't feel his arm at all, but he still stays true to his oath. Could he actually lower his arm after holding it up for so many years? There are no scientific studies on this topic, maybe because there aren't that many people who hold their arms up for half a century. But here's what Steve managed to find on the internet. Bharati's arm muscles are severely atrophied, blood circulation appears to be cut off, and nerve endings are irreversibly damaged. Any attempt to use the arm will result in its destruction. The arm will snap! Not the bone. The bone is actually fine, but the cartilage is dried, so it'll collapse right away. The fact that the arm was connected to the rest of the body is the only thing that preserved it from necrosis. If he puts his arm down, the connection will break and the arm will just… rot? The body of the man adapted to the unnatural pose as best it could. Most likely, it even grew additional connective tissues so that Bharati could hold his arm vertically without putting any effort into this. By the way, did you see Bharati's nails? Yes, these strange spirals are his nails. And that's quite interesting. Of course, all these years, the man couldn't care about a manicure, but his nails are still quite short. For comparison, these nails haven't been cut for 60 and 20 years. Most likely, Bharati's atrophy and disrupted blood circulation are the reason his nails simply stopped growing. Bharati is what they call sadhu. That's a Hindu term for ascetics. That is, people who renounce worldly pleasures, take strict vows, and keep them no matter what. They do it for different purposes. When Bharati was asked why he kept his arm raised, he replied this was his way to protest against all wars. By the way, he has followers. Several sadhus decided to raise their arms in the manner of Bharati. Some of them have been doing this for 7, 13, and even 25 years. Some need extra support. To be honest, I don't really understand how vows work, but I think it still counts. Actually, if we compare the life of a sadhu with the ordinary life of modern people, we'll see these are literally two different worlds. Take me, for example. I wake up in my apartment and drink coffee every morning. Sadhus don't have houses or any property. Well, with a rare exception. Then I get down to work. Well, I can also go to the mall. Sadhus don't work. They get anywhere on foot, sometimes over long distances, and don't own money. I can order food online or, I don't know, ask Steve to cook it. Sadhus rely on food donated to them by other people. They don't visit hairdressers, dedicating all their time to spiritual practices. Perhaps the only thing we share in common is mobile phones. Modern sadhus sometimes use them, supposedly to communicate with other sadhus and exchange news. I couldn't live like this. Of course, raising their arms up isn't the only thing ascetics do. There are other spiritual practices that ordinary people may consider tough. For example, the one followed by the so-called Kareshwaris. The goal of these people is actually simple to stand on one leg, not sitting down, not even lying down to sleep. Moreover, the length of the vow is unclear. Some sources mention 12 years, others attach no specific time frame at all. Kareshwaris have a swing-like device that allows them to rest during the day. Of course, this doesn't look like a proper rest. A person simply rests his hands and continues to stand. At night, Kareshwari sort of lies down on this swing, but his foot still touches the ground. Of course, this practice has certain consequences for the body. They say sometimes it can even result in a disability. What do you think about sadhus who endure cold on purpose? In winter, they gather in Saptabhadri, a group of temples located in the Himalayas, and live there at temperatures down to minus 4 degrees Fahrenheit. There's snow up to 6 feet deep and actual mountains around. But sadhus often wear blankets only, and that's it. Some put on clothes, but looking at these photos, I doubt they feel warm. But sadhus aren't discouraged by this. 
They endure the cold and even bathe in ice water. You know, I got into the sea once before it properly warmed up. The water was, well, maybe 55 degrees Fahrenheit, and it was damn cold. But sadhus don't mind the cold when they're focused on their practices. What could possibly be cooler and more incredible than this? Hmm. What do you think a man who hasn't had anything to eat or drink for 76 years looks like? If this man can be considered alive, I would imagine someone incredibly thin, sickly, and falling apart. Oh, never mind. Turns out he looks like this. His name was Prahlad Jani. He was an Indian monk who claimed to have stopped eating and drinking in 1940. Jani had a huge number of followers, not surprising given his abilities. His spiritual journey supposedly began at the age of 12, and when he turned 14 he became an ascetic, settled in a cave where he stopped eating and drinking. But let's be honest, you can claim all you want, but is there any scientific evidence to support his claims? Well, you could say that. In 2003 and 2010, Jani went through two separate observational studies and medical scrutiny. The aesthetic was under constant observation, and both times, the doctors came to the conclusion that he actually didn't drink or eat, at the same time staying in excellent physical shape. Can these studies be considered unbiased? It's up to you to decide. Here, for example, we got pictures of Johnny's bladder. As for me, I don't have a clue. Steve, Steve, come here. What do you make of that? Well, we aren't doctors. But we know that Johnny died on May 26, 2020, at the age of 91. And this is, in any case, a respectable age, even if he occasionally broke his vow. Kailash Singh's vow seems more… radical? In 1974, shortly after his marriage, he decided he would quit bathing because the priest said that this was a sure way to conceive a son. Spoiler, it didn't work. The man has seven daughters now but the reluctance to wash has already turned into his vow. And that's assuming Singh is a sheep herder who works under a scorching sun. But the only cleansing that he allows himself is a fire bath each evening. The man believes this helps to get rid of sweat. His family and neighbors would disagree, but it's impossible to make him change his mind. However, during the Victorian era, this approach to hygiene didn't bother anyone. Those who could afford a bathtub took a bath several times a month. Doctors advised against bathing, believing it had a negative effect on health and appearance of the skin. Unlike a healthy layer of dirt, yeah. You know what's odd? Despite his decision to avoid bathing, Kailash Singh is actually not the dirtiest person on the planet. This rather questionable title belongs to a man named Amu Haji, who hasn't washed for almost 70 years. He lives in one of the villages in Iran. This elderly man believes that if he takes a bath, he'll definitely get sick, so he's always covered in ashes and dirt, smokes animal feces out of a rusty pipe, eats porcupine meat and drinks five liters of water every day. In fact, this is a very strange hermit who chose a solitary life after experiencing several emotional setbacks in his youth. Well, this can hardly be qualified as a spiritual practice. Our list of spiritual practices would be incomplete without a mummified monk. Imagine you bought a statue of a Buddhist monk because you collected stuff like that, but it looks suspicious. So you have it CT scanned to find a monk which turned into a mummy during his lifetime, by his own free will, around the year 1100. Even today, Buddhist monks believe that this mummified lama didn't die, he simply meditates in order to wake up someday and bring goodness to the world. But the most interesting thing is this isn't the only story like that. Today, there are 24 well-preserved mummies of Japanese monks who went through Sukushin Butsu practice. It took the monks about 3,000 days to prepare their bodies for mummification and happened in three stages. First, they had to stick to a strict diet of berries and pine bark, do a lot of meditation and training, then perhaps drink special poison tea, and finally they were lowered into a stone tomb. At first, the monk would ring a bell to indicate he's still alive, and when he stopped ringing, everyone around realized that the master had gone into a trance. They just had to wait another thousand days and get the mummy. Ew. If you think this is too harsh and even scary, then you aren't the only one, and I didn't even share the gruesome details. So no wonder Sukushin Butsu was banned at the end of the 19th century. Good riddance. See you later.